All right, good evening, everyone. We are live. Yes, we are. We're alive. All right, guys, so I'm going to get right to it. For those of you who may be new to the channel and have not subscribed as of yet, please do so, so that you will be alerted as to the next upcoming lives or the content that I may create on this channel. But until then, let's get into it. All right, guys, so over the last couple of days, I did a couple of videos talking about uh, problems that I was having with Photoshop. So I'm going to show you here really quick uh, before we get into the uh, boudoir editing. This is Photoshop. This is the version 22.0.0, which is the very, very first M1 version of uh, Photoshop, I believe. And this one, yes, I was able to install two versions of Photoshop on my computer. This version is 22.4.1. There's actually a 22.5 uh, that's available. <clears throat> but I was able to finally get the uh, older version to reinstall because here in the new version, if you look here under Windows, there is no longer an extension panel um, pop out or any of that. And also under filters, most of my filters uh, no longer show up here in this panel. So I'll show you the difference between this one and the other one. So let's just close this one. Actually, I'll close it. And then we'll go over to the older version. If you go up here to Windows, you see now that here is the legacy extension panel. And here are all the extensions that I have installed. And then if you go over to my filters, then here are all of my filters that I have uh, installed. So that's a problem. And hopefully, you know, this will be something that uh, Adobe will work out at some point. But I believe uh, going forward, we're just going to see that this extension panel is going to be gone um, for good. Because uh, if you update to the most, the next version of uh, this version of uh, Photoshop, the extension panel is no longer there. And I mean, that is uh, 22.0.1, um, the extension panel is gone. And uh, most of my plugins still worked, but the, all of the extensions were gone. So that's a problem, like I said. So anyway, let's get to it. So we're gonna jump over here to Lightroom. I know a lot of you guys are asking me about Lightroom because of the fact that I always talk about Capture One. As I said before, I do have Lightroom on my system <clears throat> and I've used it on occasions. Um, I'm just not you know, a big fan of it you know, right now when it comes to a lot of things that I'm editing. I just feel like I get more features shooting with Sony uh, from Capture One. So we can go through a few of the photos here. And it's just like, you know, if you've used Lightroom, you know pretty much how this works. So everything is here. Um, you can do all of your corrections here. And I mean, I have a ton of presets uh, installed in Lightroom. And I used to use them, like I said, you know, quite a few of them. Uh, and some of them are even connected and related to the panels that I also have installed. You know, like some of the lighting uh, presets here. You know, you can adjust these however you like, you know, right here in uh, Lightroom without ever going into Photoshop. And then now, even now in Lightroom, you can go in and do some rudimentary um, skin softening and blemish removal and all of those things. You know, it's a little bit more time consuming because of the way that Lightroom is set up, but it still works. It works perfectly. So if all you have is a subscription to Photoshop and you're getting Lightroom, you can get all of your work done in between those two applications, no problem. So don't think that you have to have Capture One because you hear me talking about Capture One. Um, you can use any of these uh, applications to get the same job done. So I'm just gonna pick one of these photos and I'm gonna jump over to uh, Photoshop. But first I'm gonna go through my normal um, adjustments here in Lightroom. So I would usually hit the auto just to see what it comes up with. And then I'll go ahead and do my crop. Bring that in to about there. And check my white balance. 
But no, that's off. That's pretty close. This door uh, in my old studio had a really weird um, color cast to it. It just, it, it was wood, but it just had this really weird look to it. But, you know, we're going to go ahead and bring the exposure down just a touch. And adjust the contrast. Then we'll go down and make sure that we're enabling the camera profile. Let me make sure. Yeah, that was, um, that's not a raw file. Let me pick the raw version. There we go. That's the raw one, I think. Yep. Okay, so let's do the same thing. So let's go ahead and enable the camera profile. I'm going to go back up. Hit auto. Get a white balance right. It seems a little magenta, so I'm going to warm that back up a little bit. Go ahead and crop this. Look at that skin tone. Looks a little yellow to me. White balance off of her eyes. Yeah, that's much better. Okay. So we got a white balance right. Everything else is proportional. I am a little annoyed with the lines here, so I'm going to adjust that. I'm just going to use the straightening tool. I'm just going to straighten the doors so that all the lines are um, even. And then we're just going to jump over and edit this in Photoshop. And as you see here, all of my other presets uh, and plugins are here from Lightroom. I can go to On One, I can go to Luminar, I can jump over to any of the NYX collections. Uh, all of this stuff is right here. Now, what I noticed when, even when I did update um, Photoshop, these were still present in Lightroom. So whatever is affecting Photoshop doesn't affect Lightroom. So you could still round trip right here from Lightroom. You could go into any of these other uh, plugins, and do whatever it is you need to do, and then come right back to Lightroom without ever going to Photoshop. So, you know, that's that. So let's go ahead and open this in Photoshop. Give it a couple of seconds. It's a big file. All right, so you guys have seen me do this a number of different times, so you know the routine. <clears throat> Usually I go in and I take a look at, you know, exactly what it is I want to correct in the image. If there's, you know, any major imperfections, uh, blemishes, things like that that I want to take out. This is about where I would do it. So we're going to hit Command-J, duplicate this layer. I'm going to go over here and grab our spot healing brush. And let's make sure that we're on a, which brush we're on. Yeah, that's good. So I can just go in here and just start taking out some of these little imperfections. You want this to make sure it's darkened for some reason. Bring that back to normal. There we go. Get all these little flyaway hairs. You know, obviously you can get in a little bit closer um, and take a little bit more time um, taking these hairs out if you have flyaway hairs um, from your client. Let's zoom in there a little bit. Yeah. Oh, my brush is a little big. So just go in and take them out. But hairspray is your friend as a photographer, trust me. So if you can lock these hairs down before the shoot, trust me, it's going to be a win for you.
Now, a lot of times in frequency separation, you'll get a lot of, you can, you can remove a lot of these through frequency separation, depending on what you set your radius at. But if you want to maintain the uh, skin texture, you want to set for a high radius, which will still maintain a lot of the texture in the skin. And that's usually the goal. You don't want a person, um, unless you know, it's something the client wants. But generally, you want to try and maintain as much of the skin texture as possible. So, now what's going on there? So let me grab my patch tool. There we go. I don't know why that didn't want to come out the first time. And you'll switch between tools depending on, you know, what you need the tool for or what you're using the tool for. A lot of these, you know, little pimples, things like that. Now, I see a lot of retouchers will um, use dodge and burn. Uh, they're going in micro dodge and burn, um, all of these little imperfections and things like that. I, I don't have a problem with that. I just think it's very, very time consuming. If you have a number of photos that you need to get out and you need to get them out in a timely manner, that's going to be very, very, very time consuming to get all of those. So... Like an area here, I would just, you know, use the um, patch tool and just take out this whole area. Just relocate it to, you know, look for a better sampling of skin. And just kind of clean that up real quick. Doesn't have to be perfect. But you're still going to go around and do some more um, skin retouching. But this will get rid of some of the imperfections, just knock those out. So any blemishes that you see, I'm still seeing, you know, a few flyaway hairs here. Um, I could just grab these. You could just kind of lasso them and move them out. I don't like what that did right there, so and Z. Still there, but not that big of a deal. And then you can always go in with your um, clone tool if you need to, and you have an area that's becoming very, very prob problematic. You can use your clone tool to uh, fix some of that. So any of these other little imperfections, we'll just go ahead and knock these out real quick. I'm making really large selections for some reason tonight. Because I'm not using my pencil. I'm using my fingers. All right, so now here, this is another area where you can go in um, and just really just start looking for better, you know, um, clear skin. And just pick those areas and just kind of move them out. Wherever you see them, just keep moving them. You can do it in smaller sections. In some cases, you can get away with really large sections, depending on how close you are to uh, the skin that you're going to be sampling from. And you can just go in and take out all of these little um, marks. So like here, just move up. And then once you have an area that's clear, that's of the same tonality, you can just get kind of sample from that same tonality if you need to. And just keep moving it around. You just want to make sure you're not creating patterns that's going to be distinguishable, you know, from normal skin. I'm just going here and just cleaning these up. But even if I move this way over here, it'll still blend pretty well, um, you know, for what we're going to be doing here. So let's just say that's pretty good. We're good there. Um, I don't see much on the legs. Like I said, a lot of this, you catch it in your frequency separation. But let's just assume everything is kosher. Let's look at the full image again. 
So let's go ahead and run our frequency separation. Uh, which one am I running today? So I'm just going to run the basic frequency separation. And a lot of times I um, rearrange the image here so I can get a better look at it. And then I zoom all the way out. I take the radius all the way down to zero and then zoom back in. And I find an area right here around the T-zone area. And then that's kind of where I determine um, how blurry I want this to be, you know, based on what it is I'm trying to achieve. So let's say for this image, I'm somewhere around between 12 and 14. So let's just go with 12. And then I'm going to close this, deselect our high layer. And we're going to be working on a low layer uh, for our color. But we're going to go ahead and choose the high layer temporarily. And we're going to get a black and white layer. I'm going to crush the reds so we can see all the different tones of the skin. You can see it all in here on the arm, the legs, so on. And as long as you can see it, you know the colors that, you know, that you're trying to blend. So that's our black and white helper layer. We can go back here, grab our um, mixer brush. I'll bring this down to maybe five. And then I can just kind of really just go in here. This brush is a little large, but make our brush a little bit smaller. And my soft brush. Okay, so we're just going to go in and just start mixing the skin. And we can get rid of some of those um, blemishes in the skin color and just harmonize them. Get those to mix pretty well. And you want to select and mix in an area, then release, then select, mix in an area, so on and so on. You get all those colors to blend pretty much evenly. And you'll start to see it right away um, as the colors are blending uh, better together. together. And that's the goal. And I'm just kind of speeding through this, but you guys get the idea. You've seen this enough times. We're almost there. Now, when you get to your dodging and burning, um, you want to make sure, at least I try to, um, maintain the difference between your highlights and your shadows and your darks because you want to really be able to emphasize those um, when it comes time to start doing your um, dodging and burning. If you're going to be doing any dodging and burning at all. I mean, I, I think it's always a good idea, even if you just do it a little bit, just so that you can emphasize, um, you know, the difference between the highlights and the shadows. So let's go ahead and move into the face real quick here. And we're just going to get a smaller brush. Kind of blend this in. Everything looks good. Blending into the highlights. There's a little shadowed area here. Around the cheekbone, bridge of the nose. Right here above the lip. Like I said, you know, using the black and white layer, you'll be able to see these, the different tonalities of these colors. But after a while, you'll stop. You won't even really need the black and white layer. You can just turn it off 
and you can start to see the colors, um, you know, how you want to blend them. Like I said, that, again, is just a tool. It's a helper layer, you know, to help you find those colors and then blend them better together. Like here I see, you know, some tones that could be better blended. And you don't have to spend hours doing this. You just, you know, get in there and look for your colors and um, blend them as best as possible. And then stop for a second and take a look at what you have. So right here is the area where we removed uh, the marks on her, on her stomach. I'm going to go in here and blend those colors in real well. And especially any place that you've uh, removed any imperfections, you just want to go over those colors and make sure that they're blending. All right, so let's turn our eye layer back on. We can see, go down to before and after. And zoom all the way out. Before, that's after. Look at the face real quick here. We turn everything off. We're just looking at the color now. It looks good. Okay. So I know there's a couple of things that I'd want to do here body wise just to clean up um, some of the lines. So um, let's say we're done with our frequency separation. I just go ahead and create my stamp layer. And that's going to be Shift Option Command E. And then I'm going to use that layer in Liquify. So I'm just jump here to Liquify. And I'm going to go in and make um, these little slight body modifications whenever it opens. Well, since it's already opened here to the face, I'm going to adjust our jawline just a little bit. Everything else looks good. Now I'm going to get my push tool and I'm going to look for the areas that I want to work in, like right here um, around her bra area. And I'm just going to make the brush a little bit larger. I'm just going to start pushing. It is way too high. You may have to adjust your pressure. I'm going to bring that down some so I won't move so much. So this line right here I'm going to take out completely. So right now what I'm doing is just pushing the skin, even out um, the shape of the arm. And I'm not trying to flatten her stomach. I'm just trying to push in just a little bit. And even with the leg, I might just adjust that just a touch. Bring the arm in just a little bit around the face. Right in this little line up here. And I mean, yeah, there's a lot more that you could obviously do. I mean, I could really go in here and really adjust the, the tummy. But when you're doing boudoir, um, you want to try and keep it as photorealistic as possible. Now, because of the way her tummy is poking out here, I am going to uh, make her belly button a little bit smaller. So I'm going to go over here to the pucker tool. You have a number of different tools over here, but one of them is your uh, pucker tool. And you can just make that brush a little bit larger. And you can just start clicking. You're just drawing it in just a little bit. And then you could take your push tool if you wanted to. And kind of push that up. Just to make it a little bit smaller. Zoom in here on the area. So what I want to do here, I want to get this as close to about the same as possible. So when I remove this line, 
it really won't look like anything has been um, taken away. And we have the bra perfect here. Get that right. Okay, let's just say that's good. We're gonna click OK. And then we can see our before. And after. So like I said, I wanna take this line out right here. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab this tool. Just draw around it. couple of times just to get it even. Now, what you can do, uh, if you want to soften the skin, um, the color a little bit more, you can go back to your um, lower level layer, but it's not going to affect this image. So, uh, what a lot of people would have done here is that you would have just gone in and selected different parts of the, the body and then blurred that even more with Gaussian, Gaussian blur before you got to uh, this aspect of it. But I'm happy with this as it is. Okay, so I don't really want to do much more to her skin. The only thing else I would probably do here would be, um, you know, like some, maybe um, add a LUT you know, just simple enough, and we could just go in and just create, grab one of our lookup, click on a lookup, um, and then choose a LUT. There's a few here that I think works good with her skin tone. Actually, go down to Yeah, I like that. Yeah, that one's nice, but let's try something a little warmer. That's a little washed out. I'm not a fan of that. Try this one. I said that gives us kind of a cold look. And you know, in some situations that could be perfect, but I'm I'm thinking more warm, uh warm tones is what I'm interested in for this image. So I'm looking for one of my LUTs that's going to give me more of a warm skin tone. Try that one. And these take a few seconds to load. Now that one's way over the top, but I think we could adjust it. Let's bring the opacity down. And then zoom out. Yeah, I'm liking that for the skin tone. Now, of course, like I said, you can go in and you can do um, some dodging and burning, you know, to really emphasize like her um, stomach muscles or something like that if you wanted to. But another uh, easy way to do this is to kind of cheat a little bit. I'm just going to make create another stamp layer from all of these. And then what I'm going to do is duplicate that stamp layer. As you see here, this um, is running really slow. Because this is, this is not the actual version of uh, Photoshop I should be running on this computer. But 
I'm going to go here. And I'm going to choose soft light. Give it a second. Yeah, this is really taking um, a toll. But I like that. So that's still a little much. So I'm going to bring that down a little bit. I'm going to make it pop. Yeah, that works. And then, I mean, there's the other things that you can also do. You know, you can still go in and you can whiten the eyes if you wanted to. So if you wanted to, uh, you know, run um, uh, one of your actions, whichever action you have, uh, be careful of people who may have contacts because they'll have a little bit of discoloration around um, that part of their eye. So if you start to whiten it, it can look a little weird. But we're just going to go in here and just... Um, Oh, I grabbed the wrong LUT. This is for teeth whitening. Oops. Well, let's get rid of that. And what we want to do is we want to we want to enhance the eyes, right? So where's my LUT? Here's my eye enhancing LUT. Run that. You don't have to be perfect. You just have to pay attention and make sure that if you do make a mistake, that you're able to go in and then correct it and know why you're doing the things that you're doing. Yeah, this is running ridiculously slow. But I know there's going to be another uh, update to the beta that I'm testing. So hopefully um, tomorrow or the next day, the new beta will be out and then... Um, that may correct a lot of these problems. So I'm just going to whiten her eyes. There. And I'm going to lower the opacity because I don't want it to be too much. I think that's a bit right. That's close enough. All right, let's zoom all the way out, see what we get. So we'll go all the way back down. This is before. And that's after. And it catches up. Yeah, that works for me. So hopefully you guys learned something. You know, if you're learning something from these videos, trust me, I'll keep doing them. Uh, if you have something in mind that you'd like to see me demonstrate, whether it's one of these panels, hopefully these will still be working once I do the update. Well, right now the panels are here. Um, I can't activate them. I've had no problems running them. They just run a little slow for some reason. But, you know, like I said, they're here. Anyway, guys, I will catch you guys in two days in the next live. This content will probably be up tomorrow on Facebook and possibly uh, snippets on uh, Instagram. And if you're not following me on Instagram and Facebook, please do so. And if you um, follow my link in the bio, you can also find me on TikTok. I'm trying to get my TikTok numbers up so I can go live on TikTok. So please follow me on TikTok and share this content with anyone that you think that might be able to benefit from this information that I'm putting out there. All right, guys, I want you to stay safe, wash your hands, wear a mask, Take care of your loved ones and get out there and create something amazing. All right, I'm out. Peace.